On this chonky episode of, How It's Automated. Computers. Computers are complex logic machines that are used to control advanced behavior in machines. By simply taping two or more together using Fixit industrial tape, you can double its computational power, and doing so, will make more efficient factories. So, let's see how it's automated. The pioneer starts by locating a source of natural petroleum, also known as crude oil. This bubbling thick goo can range from brown to a golden color depending on the region. In this particular area, the oil is extra dark and is favorited by the paleberry bush as its main source of nourishment. The pioneer builds an oil extractor to pull that extra juicy oil from far below the surface. The machine then pressurizes it and shoots it into a pipe to be processed elsewhere as they didn't want to disturb the berry plants. The oil is routed to a small refinery station to begin the process. Using secret advanced fix-it techniques, refinery buildings convert the oil into plastic and rubber in their purest form. Extra juicy plastic with a side of rubber please. A byproduct of this stage is a purple chunky goop called heavy oil residue. Boy that stuff is goopy so don't get it on your hands. The plastic, rubber, and heavy oil residue is routed across a bridge to the next processing areas. Let's start with the heavy oil residue. The heavy oil residue is pumped to a set of blender buildings to blend it with water. On its own, the heavy oil residue is essentially napalm so mixing it with some water not only changes its color to orange, it creates a combustible liquid properly named, fuel. Exact ratios redacted. Our camera crew were told that the lake below is also a favorite swimming spot of the lizard doggos, so the proper safety systems were placed on the water extractors to prioritize their safety and preservation in this area. Here comes one now. It looks like he just wanted to say hi. The fuel is then routed via Mark II pipes to a series of generators to provide power to the entire plant. This makes me wonder, which came first? The power or the fuel to start the power plant? They even set up some backup battery buildings in the event of a power outage. Neat. To see what happens to the plastic, pioneers first need to gather some copper. A miner building is used to coax the copper from the ground with some accurately placed friction. Fixit would like to announce that the mining machine has a taste for pioneers, so do not go near them once built. The more fingers pioneers have, the more efficient they can be. The copper ore is belted up using the noodle lift method. Go noodle belt go! The unsmelted copper ore is then smelted in some smelter buildings that smelt ore into smelted copper ingot smelt bars. Got that one on the first take, score! The ingots then are squished out into long sheets of copper, known as copper sheets. Go figure! This process is completed by constructor buildings. The copper sheets are then belted over to a drone to do his thing. That is one speedy boy. Drone 1 to fix at headquarters, arriving at location for pickup. Over. You are clear for pickup, drone 1. Over. The drone then delivers the copper sheets so they can be combined with the plastic in assembler buildings. Somehow, merging some copper with plastic creates circuit boards. Regardless, there they go. At least these won't be in short supply unlike those for crypto mining. Before we see where the circuit boards go, one more item is needed to be made. The Caterium node is located to begin the next process. The Caterium finds its way to a series of smelters that, you guessed it, smelt the ore into Caterium ingots. The Caterium ingots are then stretched out into what is called quick wire in standard constructor buildings. Essentially it is wire that is quick. Who would have guessed? Look at it fly on those belts. The quick wire is then loaded and flown via another drone to its destination. Let's see where it goes. The quick wire arrives to the final stage of the computer process. Here it combines with the rubber and circuit boards inside of manufacturer buildings and this is where the magic happens. Using some fix-it industrial tape and glue, all three items are combined to create computers. Any one of these computers is capable of playing games above 10 frames per second, but are mainly used in other factories to maximize efficiency. 
the computers are then ran over a lengthy belt to allow the paint time to dry. The sun's warmth also helps the components inside solidify more for a solid shock-resistant function. The computers are then routed to a sink that not only cools them, it stores them for later use, or at least that's what they told me to say. And that is how computers are automated. Computers are essential for any efficient factory by taking a mega, byte, out of calculation time. Keep those suggestions coming for what you want to see automated next. If you want to see more, hit that thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe. Fix it thanks you for being efficient.